Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the Citizenship of St. Lucia Amendment Bill. And even before I say a few words in support of the, of the bill, Mr. Speaker, I want to congratulate all honorable members, you, Mr. Speaker, and all citizens of St. Lucia who have joined the NIC today and the Ministry of Health and other agencies in what we call National Sneaker Day. There are some really wonderful sneakers around the, the table, Mr. Speaker. One of them in national colors. Somebody evoked the memories of Bata. And um, we have some really wonderful sneakers. But Mr. Speaker, the National Sneaker Day also reminds us to walk a little more, exercise a little more, because we have a big problem with non-communicable diseases, and that is one small way, Mr. Speaker, very, very small way of demonstrating our commitment to living healthier lives and having healthier lifestyles. But Mr. Speaker, I wish to, to say that this amendment to the citizenship of St. Lucia Bill is yet another step. The Minister for Finance and Member of Parliament for Castries has said it. It is yet another building block, another step in, in the process of nation building. And Mr. Speaker, we can go way back to the days of the great Sir George F. L. Charles fighting for one hour lunch for workers in this country. We can go back to the days of the unions, the 1930s when the union leaders fought for, for rights and all of these building blocks, Mr. Speaker. We can go back to the days of equal pay for um, men and women by the Labour Party. We can go. There are several building blocks, Mr. Speaker. And this one is particularly important because it forces us to ask ourselves this question. Is there value in being a St. Lucian? What is the value of our St. Lucianness? And how do people feel in the diaspora when they are called St. Lucians? And how do they feel about their children being called St. Lucians? And the challenges, several of our constituents, I'm sure some of our relatives who have lived in the United States or Canada, or Australia, wherever, Africa, and their grandchildren want to become St. Lucians and they want to know more about the country of their parents' birth and what is it about this little island that causes so many places in the world to look and to, to look upon us with, uh, to look upon us in awe and to say there is something in this little island that, 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 that generates, you know, admiration um, from the world. We can speak of our Nobel laureates, but not only that. We can speak about our, our athletes. We can speak about the mannerisms of St. Lucians. We can speak about so many things. And this amendment stretches our arms to, to our brothers and sisters all around the world and to say to them, there is this warm embrace by St. Lucia that you too belong to us. And it's happening at a time it's happening in the middle of, of this debate around the Citizenship by Investment Program. And it's a stark contrast to, to some of the views that people have about, about our St. Lucianness. There you have other individuals who want to become St. Lucians. And we are saying today that our blood, our flesh and blood, must also be given the opportunity to become St. Lucians. This, Mr. Speaker, impacts, as I said, um, citizens, our, our constituents. For me personally, it impacts my own family. Uh, my mom, Mr. Speaker, Gelly, who, who has been you know, in the United States for a very, very long time. And as I've said to most of my friends before, almost all of my immediate family live overseas. I'm one of the only ones who decided not to go because <laughs> for some reason I thought, for some reason many years ago, have a very simple reason, you know, Mr. Speaker. 
I love the art so much and drumming and that kind of thing. And for some reason I thought in the, in the early 80s, if I left St. Lucia at that time, I would not be able to play drums and so on. And very, yeah, I, I, I thought at the time that I would not be able to. Um, of course, that is not so. I mean, all around the world you could do your arts. But at the time, I thought that I left St. Lucia with the rest of my family, I would not be involved in FRC and books and drumming and that kind of thing. And that's why I did not leave. That's why I did not leave. And so my mother and all of them, my brothers and my uncles and everyone, who lives in whether England or the United States. I know my nephews and, 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 and my nieces, they always come to St. Lucia and they always say, Uncle, you know, can I buy a piece of land here? Or, you know, why can't I, I build and so on? And, and I want to be St. Lucian. And I know this amendment is very personal, not only to me, every single one of us, I'm sure. We have relatives overseas and um, constituents who will now feel yes, not only to contribute to the economy and to the intellectual debate and so on in St. Lucia, but also there is this feeling that, that I want to be part of this country. People from Cayenne, Mr. Speaker, we have a very large St. Lucian community in Cayenne, and when you, when you listen to them, you get the feeling that many of them want to be closer to St. Lucia. And it may not be directly connected to, to all of what's happening here, the economy and so on, but for some reason, Mr. Speaker, when you have periods of, of, of grief and an uncertainty in the world, wars and wars all over the place and so on, psychologically, for some reason, individuals want to, want to relate to a base, you know, a base of tranquility and love and, and, and calmness and so on. And for some reason, that too stretches to all of that, that we are St. Lucians and we are embracing our St. Lucianness in far and wide places. So, Mr. Speaker, I am content to have changed the law, to have tried to change the law aujourd'hui. And who is that? That means that if you have a great mama who has done it here, and who has done it in Australia, or in Angleterre, who has done it as a citizen of this place? And that is very important, Mr. Speaker, parce que nous n'avons pas de citoyens, de citoyens de l'autre pays qui voulaient venir à cette liste. Ils voulaient ni passeport à cette liste. Et avec ça, c'était un bagage qui était en couverture parce qu'ils ont vu l'autre monde qui a joué à venir citoyen de cette liste. Et les grands mamans qui ont fait cette liste, qui ont fait l'histoire de cette liste, là, ils viennent, mais nous n'y respectons avec ça, comme ça, même si nous n'y trois cas à présent. Mais ça, c'est trois cas, ça là, pareil, c'est les lycéens. Et plus nous embrassons, j'en sais les lycéens, tout partout, au lieu de la terre, et qu'il fait nous un plus meilleur pays, avec plus de monde qui garde nous, qu'on nous embrasse, ça qui sont nous, et que nous ne pouvons pas ignorer ça qui sont nous. Et c'est pour ça que ça est important. Moi aussi, je dis, M. Speaker, qui... Nous tous qui assis au lieu de table, nous sommes constituants, nous sommes qui ont différents ces constituants, qui ça, ça a affecté à de bonnes manières, parce que nous sommes familles de l'Angleterre, avec ces jeunes mouns, ces mouns qui font dans ces pays, ça veulent venir cette liste, avec aussi nous-mêmes, personnellement, nous sommes maman, nous, papa, nous, grand maman, nous, aïeul, nous, qui ni ni veut avec niécio, qui veut ni passe pour cette liste. Et avec ça, c'est un bagage que le gouvernement a fait. Et M. le Speaker, ça, c'est ça qui a fait tous ces bagages-là, nous a fait avec pas un gouvernement ça là seulement, mais le gouvernement, les bas partis, tout en ces temps-là, les différents bagages qu'ils ont fait côté George Charles de Goumen pour travailler, jouer, nous avons dit un déjeuner. En chaque monde, ces bagages-là étaient toujours là. Ils étaient pour Goumen pour travailler, jouer, nous avons dit un déjeuner. Nous avons dit Goumen pour pour même loi non mais que femme les autres travaillent puis aujourd'hui même l'argent les barcodes toutes quelques bagages pour faire pays cette liste un pays côté nous ça really ni l'orgueil un pays ça là so Mr Speaker I support the citizenship of Saint Lucia amendment bill and I am sure Saint Lucians far and wide will be rejoicing if not at this very moment but when the the news spreads. They will feel 
that this government once again is really strengthening our St. Lucianness and opening our arms and embracing St. Lucians all around the world. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.